Hello friends, welcome back to Moon Magic Spirit, and if you're new, welcome. My name is Meg, and today we have a collective pick a card reading for Mars and Gemini. Mars recently entered Gemini, and I thought it'd be fun to do a collective pick a card reading, and I would say ironically, but there are no coincidences. I haven't done a pick a card reading since Gemini season. So let's find out what this energy means, what it means for you, what messages there are. And before we get into the individual groups of readings, I do want to talk about Mars and Gemini in general so we can have a better understanding of what it means. Mars recently entered Gemini where it is staying there for seven long months until my birthday. March 25th. So if you are new here, be sure to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you're excited. And as always, thank you for lending your time and energy into the video. So what exactly is Mars and Gemini and what does it mean for us? Let's dive in. Gemini is an air sign. It's very elusive, almost mysterious because Gemini really keeps to themselves. They have a lot of inner thoughts. They tend to overthink a lot, but they are very curious beings. They want to know um, a lot of how things work. They're very fascinated by that. They're also very much like they'll sit back in the corner and observe the room and, you know, make their own thoughts and conclusions and judgments in their head rather than expressing it out loud. They're more quiet and to themselves. Um, they're very understanding in situations, which makes it interesting being in Mars, since Mars is the planet of aggression and war traditionally. There's more to Mars than just that, but Gemini is very inquisitive and very aware of the consciousness. So I feel like during this Mars and Gemini season, we're going to be collectively having a lot of realizations that we're not necessarily going to be happy about. But the good news is, is that we're collectively upset about them. So there's going to be more action taken to get these things collected and accounted for, if that makes sense. Now, when it comes to the planet Mars, it's naturally in Aries and Scorpio. Um, and it's a very strategic and leadership planet. It has a lot of powerful energy. So again, taking that consciousness, collective thoughts of like, this isn't right or what's going on here. We're going to transmute that into leadership roles and see a lot of movement. I think we're going to see a lot of social movement when it comes to the collective. There's a lot of action, motivation, momentum, drive when it comes to Mars. Um, Mars is a very determined planet and it's a brute force. It's very, very passionate. So I'm interested to see because Gemini can also be very passionate about their causes and what they care about. So I'm very interested to see collectively how this all comes together. I am someone that has Mars and Gemini natally in my chart, eighth house. Um, if you also have it in your eighth house, let me know in the comments down below. So one thing that it says because I love the Time Passages app. If you're looking for a free astrology app, I highly suggest you download it. It just says that the downside of this placement is that you can be a little sharp-tongued with uh, your friends and family and coworkers, and you may indulge a little bit in gossip, but overall the outpouring energy from this placement is strongly centered in communicating your truth, perhaps through writing. So maybe that is some of what we will see during this season. Let's get on to the spread. This is a four card draw, and I'm also going to be including oracle cards at the end of the reading as always. So the four questions that are going to be asked during this reading are, how can I achieve calm, collected, and clear communication during this period? Staying present and grounded is important in all this fire and air energy. What embodied mindfulness practices should you be focusing on during this period? This is a highly productive energy. What skills do you need to be expanding on or learning during this period? And lastly, we'll conclude with a message from Mars. So that is the whole rundown on Mars and Gemini, what to expect and what to expect out of this spread. So if you are new to pick a card readings, let's go ahead and give you a quick rundown on how this works. If you are new here and if you are, please check out the description box with the Koji link. It'll show you where else you can follow me on social media. I would also really love it if you could share in the comments 
what part of the reading resonated with you. I'd love to get some conversation going down there. Whichever crystal or card pile you are most drawn to has messages for you. There may be more than one pile that you can connect with. If you're kind of like indecisive between two, that's totally fine. You can listen to the messages for both piles. There's messages in both piles for you. This is a collective reading. So take what resonates with you and leave the rest. If you're interested in a more personal one-on-one -on -one reading, there is a link for my website in the bio and you can book a personal one-on-one -on -one tarot reading with me. In a moment, I will pause so we can all take a deep collective breath together to connect with your intuition if you still haven't resonated with a pile yet. If you need more time, take a couple of deep breaths, pause the video when you feel ready and know which pile is ready for you. There are timestamps in the comments and the description bar, so click the timestamp for your pile and I will see you over there for your reading. So let's go ahead and take one really big deep breath in together. Hold for a minute and release. Feel free to pick your pile and I will see you over there for your reading. Welcome group one to your reading on Mars and Gemini transit. You have selected this gorgeous sunstone. I absolutely love it. For group one, I just wanted to touch on sunstone since this is a pile that you picked. Sunstone is a confident and radiant stone. It's a stone of leadership, encouraging the wearer to be open, but benevolent and willing to bestow blessings upon others. It's also known as a stone of joy. Sunstone is believed to inspire good nature and an enjoyment of life. It also is really good for motivation and manifesting your creative desires. So let's keep that in mind as we get into your reading. So we do have a pile with four questions that need some answers. And then we do have some Oracle cards as always at the end. So be sure you stick around for that. I am trying something a little bit different with my readings. Um, I'm trying to go dig a little bit deeper and find more of the psychology into the tarot. So I hope you are ready for that, my friends. We are also on a brand new camera, so hopefully everything looks and sounds great. All right, so our first question is, how can you achieve calm, collected, clear communication during this Mars and Gemini transit? Such an important question to ask. And what we pulled is the Page of Imps, which is the Page of Wands. I did pull out my Halloween tarot deck because it is spooky season and it was calling to me and I absolutely love this deck and I'm so excited to work with it. I hope you are too, to get a little bit different energy than what we're used to. So here you can already see this mischievous imp, but is he really mischievous though? It looks like he's kind of guiding the page along the way. And then we also have our friend, the black cat that appears in and out of the cards. The black cat is known as a guide in this deck. The page is also, you know, standing very straight. We have the imp guiding them. They're confidently holding onto this stick that has this nice spark of fire on it. So the page has started, ignited a fire, so to say. And when it comes to the court cards, the page is often seen as the child or seen as the student. So when it comes to communication and relating that to the page, we can often think back to childhood and how we were, as children, we were often silenced due to environmental pressures and or, you know, parental conditioning. So it's time to connect back to our childlike enthusiasm before it was repressed. I think we can all relate back to the sort of sense of like whimsical freedom that we had, the curiosities that we had about us, always asking and questioning why about everything before we were told to just, you know, accept it, it is what it is, and to be quiet. So I think kind of reconnecting with that childlike wisdom. That was a big one. Um, I wonder how that picked up on camera. <laughs> That was 
a huge clap of thunder. It rarely rains, let alone thunderstorms where I live because I live in the desert. So this is quite spooky and I'm loving it so much. Um, so when it comes to communication, we have like, we want to reconnect that childlike wonderment of asking why, but we also want to be very careful when it comes to our communication, because if you think about it, children are like some of the most honest like brutally honest people out there so that's something to kind of keep aware of especially when it comes to the page of imps which is the page of wands which is the fire sign so you can get a little bit fiery with <laughs> your brutal honesty so be mindful of that during this mars and gemini um and it's going to want us to dispel this so use bravery to speak up, you know, like when we were kids, we were kind of afraid of nothing. So use that bravery to speak up in situations, but make sure when you're speaking up, you're being honest with what you're saying and that you're remaining curious about the situation. So what I mean when I say remain curious about the situation is that, um, you know, quietly kind of gather all the information. Don't speak too soon. Don't speak on a whim because fire signs can be a little bit impulsive. And with Gemini, Gemini is very quizzical. They really are curious. They like to gather and soak up as much information as possible. So remain curious about your questions and make sure you're gathering the whole, you know, make sure you're knowing the whole story before you speak up here because you can't know how to facilitate a conversation without gathering information, knowing the whole story. Don't let this be a wild card of stubbornness. So that's how you can achieve the calm, collective, and clear communication during Mars and Gemini, just kind of like hold back, make sure you know the whole story, gather all your information, and kind of have like that childlike, quizzical, wondrous curiosity behind your questions and behind your communication. Up next, what embodied mindfulness practices should you focus on during this transit? And here we have the Six of Bats, which is, which is the Six of Swords, in regular tarot lingo. So, how can you be mindful? How can you embody mindfulness practices? What should you be focusing on with this? So this is like a rather deep emotional card with a lot of like mental baggage, so to say, that you're parting with. So this is, this card also represents a state of transition that you may be in so you kind of have your belongings you have your pumpkins with you you know our little kitty is there it looks like you're off to in the distance like where you're going to is better where you're at but if you notice in the imagery there's some rough waters but it looks like smooth sailing ahead you just have to navigate these waters maybe you need to let go of some of the baggage that you're holding on to so you can get to that other destination quicker and it's not slowing you down or holding you back. So like I said, this is a state of transition which fits with the transit of the full moon that we just had over the weekend, the Mercury retrograde that we're in. This is all about a moving, transitioning of, you know, who you are into who you were meant to be. So you're moving away from who you used to be into who you're meant to be. So what I mean by that is that, you know, a lot of times, again, we have like that societal pressure of telling us who we should be, what we should do, and we kind of fall in line with it. So that's kind of like who we used to be. And when I say when we fall in line to who you're meant to be, who you are meant to be is who you ultimately want to be. So not bottling up your emotions is really important when it comes to mindfulness because bottling up these emotions is going to cause you stress. It's going to weigh you down. It's going to weigh your boat down. It's going to take you longer to cross the river. Becoming aware of patterns that no longer serve you is another way to practice mindfulness during this transit. And again, this transit is seven months, so this isn't something you have to discover in like the next week. You literally have more than half a year to be working on this. Becoming aware of the patterns that no longer serve you and seeing a pattern and analyzing it and really studying it 
you start to see where the fear in that pattern lives because you want to break the pattern but it can be nerve-wracking and scary to break a pattern because that fear is there so you can avoid the fear by walking down the worn path that you've always walked down or you can confront this and go on a new route despite the rough waters that you're going to have to navigate to get there. However your highest self is navigating the boat so you have to trust that your higher self knows the best way to go about this and your higher self navigating the boat in the rough waters can add to the fear and it adds to the role And the lights just flickered. Oh my gosh. Okay, so let me try starting this sentence again. Your higher self is navigating the boat. So you have to trust that yourself knows the best way to get you there. And that the path that your higher self is taking you down is a path of what's best for you. Because your higher self is navigating this boat through the rough waters. So that can definitely add to fear, right? It's fear of the unknown. And this, you know, you can take a look at the role that it plays in a meaningful life. So you can kind of, you know, take the fear and see how that adds to a meaningful life and how it enriches life and how life has so much more meaning to it when we look at these things that we tend to avoid and that we're complacent to. So, it's no easy task to address the unpleasant feelings, but it nudges towards something precious. So keep that in mind, my friends, during this transit. All three groups are being asked to do really difficult things and a lot of really hard work. So know that maybe it brings you some comfort. All right, for card three, what skills did you expand on during this transit? We have the Chariot, and I really like the nod to the OG Chariot card in the Pamela in the Pamela Coleman Smith deck. Um, you know, we have some little nods to it, but I really like this because you know this guy is a little freaked out. Like, whoa, slow down! Like, what are you doing? Uh, the pumpkin is just looks like they're like la la la. I'm just plowing through here. I don't care. Even our guide, our black cat, is still here with us. And even our guide is a little like, what are you doing, pal? Like, you know, their ears are perked back a little bit in a concerned manner. So the chariot is all about this rush of energy. And you may be feeling this rush of energy, especially from the page of imps, since it is a page of wands and it's a fire sign. And you may be wanting to, you know, take this chariot card and blast through the work of the last card but that would be a mistake to do so let's not let's not do that um <laughs> so be wary of your lessons of mindfulness because you don't want to arrive too quickly here embracing change and drawing on your willpower to push past obstacles so in a way taking charge and pushing through with this hearse and just like running stuff over and like you know pushing past your obstacles can be um, a good thing to have especially in current times we have mercury retrograde going on mars retrograde I think it started or it's about to start so there's going to be some difficult challenging times up ahead and these difficult times are really going to test the essence of the chariot so it's really going to test your confidence your strength your conviction your willpower your want your drive when it comes to testing all these areas you may think you'll be able to plow through with this hearse but what happens when you run into a concrete wall? Then what? Um, so, you know, your confidence, your strength, your conviction, your willpower, the want, the desire, the drive, it's only going to get you so far. Will, willfulness. It's only going to get you so far. Willfulness imposing your will on reality. So the whole lesson of the chariot is to know boundaries, to be self-sufficient, 
and to also not be defeated in the stuckness. So if you do run into that concrete wall, even though you have all these amazing skills behind you, don't feel defeated in the stuckness. Don't find complacency with the present path, even if you're not happy. So the long about way of me trying to explain skills to expand upon is knowing boundaries, becoming self-sufficient, but also feeling comfortable in the stuckness and not wanting to rush through life, not wanting to rush through the battles and all the things that you're going to have to endure during these while well, you're on this boat. Don't rush through it and like crash into like a wall. You know what I mean? So while you may have the confidence, strength, conviction, willpower, want, desire, and drive to work through all of this, slow down your process and learn to be more present in the moment. So that's really the lesson of the chariot and the skill that you need to work on developing. <laughs> that was like a very long-winded four-minute way to say that, but I feel like it's important to, di to, to, to divulge in these cards and not just give you like two sentence answers. Hopefully that's why you watch my videos and are subscribed to my channel. And a friendly reminder, if you're not, now's the perfect time to hit the subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up if you're enjoying this. Don't forget to check out the description bar to see where else you can connect with me and book a personal reading with me. And last but not least, we have a message from Mars. So our message from Mars himself is the five of, pumpkin, five of pumpkins, which is the five of pentacles. And we still have our guide, the little kitty. And talk about not being present in the moment. We can see it in this imagery. So the message of the chariot of being mindful and of being present is being reflected in this card because a child dropped their candy and the adult didn't even notice. They're like, come on, we got to go. So like not focusing on what's actually going on around you. And it also, you know, ties into the original message of, you know, being outside, being stuck in the cold and the snow, and if you were only aware of what's going on around you and mindful and present, you would see that there's resources inside. So, you know, the cat, our guide, is here paying attention to what's happening, but you are not paying attention to what's happening. So don't avoid what you need the most. Um, and don't let your pride get in the way because that's also what happens in the original story with Ryder Wade Smith is that the people who are outside of the church are too prideful to maybe go inside or they're just not aware of the resources that could be in there to help them. So don't avoid it. Be in the present. It helps you to connect to the things that are good for you. So if you feel like you're in a rut, don't numb out. When you're going through the challenges of the six of bats, don't numb out through it. Don't rush through it. Be present, be mindful. And basically this card is asking you to feel your feels and feel connected. Um, you have exactly what you need to cope through this whole progress. And through this whole seventh month journey of making these changes. And as a reminder, we do have agency and free will. So what does and does not happen is up to you. These are the messages that you have chosen from your guides that they want to uh, put down onto you. Maybe some things to make you aware of and how you can kind of work with this energy to get yourself into a better place on the other side of this transit. So even if we look at the cards as is, we do have a little bit of a story. So we have the page of wands being guided into this, being guided into the six of swords. So, you know, even the imp is guiding you and pushing you to this battle that you're going to be facing and the chariot is meeting you there so while you're on this boat you're starting the journey to get to this boat the chariot is going to try to crash into the boat um but remember to have the patience 
of that and to don't be complacent in this journey and then this is just further echoed in the last card where they're just kind of like walking away from the lesson here so make sure that you're not the person holding the cat make sure that you're the person that's you know the child stop yourself and say wait a minute i'm being complacent here i need to pay more attention and dive deeper into the six of bats let's see what oracle cards we have to pair with this and when it comes to the oracle cards i like to read from the guidebook because it gives you something to think about especially this guidebook i pulled from visions in the liminal space this is like more of like poems and like riddles it gives you something to digest from as you exit and leave this video but i will also sometimes i can't help myself and i give my own interpretation of what we have going on so to keep with the spooky theme we have quiet desperation who among us hasn't spent hours evenings months and maybe even years just waiting Waiting by the phone for a call that never comes. Waiting for a break. A reason. An answer. An apology. An opportunity. A sign to go or a sign to say. Unrequited feelings live here. Regret and milk tooth hope. The soul, knowing magic is immediate, revolts against the self-imposed state of suspended animation. You are likely waiting on something you are meant to give yourself. And man, does that tie in to the whole story. In here, we, as our last card, have the passing of time. That is also beautifully going to tie into this. Time devours. Time heals. Time flies. Time out. Time up. Time was. Time comes. Time waits for no one. All right, group one, so I feel like I left a doozy on you. I feel like I left you with a lot to think about. So let me know in the comments what resonated with you and how you feel about this. How do you feel about being confronted with all of these things? Um, I don't know if I'll do this style of reading for all of my future pick a card readings. It's just something new I wanted to try. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments and best of luck over the next seven months with this Marge and Gemini transit. As always, thank you so much for your time and energy of this video. I really do appreciate it and I will see you in the next one. If you hit subscribe, be sure to turn on the notification bell so you can be sure to see me there. Bye everyone. Best of luck. Welcome group two to your messages for Mars and Gemini and making it through this seven month long transit. Here we have pile two for you. We have four questions to be answered with tarot. We have some oracle cards and you also chose the pile that has the amethyst on it. So amethyst is known as like a very like, I think everybody knows it as like a calming stone, an anti-anxiety stone, and it does do that, but it's also known as like a protection stone. It can also help you if you're having sleeping issues. It can protect against like psychic attack. So I really love amethyst so much, and this one has so many pretty inclusions in it that you probably can't see because of the lighting, but anyways, a little for you to know about your crystal that was on top of the pile that you chose. Let's get into it. The first question is how can you achieve calm, collected, and clear communication during this transit? And the first card that we have, which is upside down, so the first card that we have is the Fool. And even though I said it was upside down, sometimes I read reversals, sometimes I don't. I was not doing reversals with this pile. So, I love that we pulled the fool because I feel like you're a little bit uptight and you need to let loose. Maybe you need to get some amethyst to help keep you calm. Um, I'm also pulling out my Halloween tarot deck if you're curious because it's spooky season. I had to do it. I absolutely love it. We have our friend, the black cat, that is our guide throughout 
the Fool's Journey, which is the entire 78 card deck. So anyways, the Fool. This is all about embracing letting go. It's just, it's not that deep. Don't let the pettiness get in the way. Scorpios, specifically, if you're watching, I'm talking to you. Don't let the pettiness get to you. And I'm allowed to say that. I'm a Scorpio moon. Don't let the pettiness get to you. Don't let it get in the way of your communication. Don't let it make you angry. Um, don't act a fool, basically. <laughs> um, so it's, you know, dance like nobody is watching is a message of the fool as well. It's okay to look silly and be misunderstood because we're also talking about Gemini here and Gemini is often misunderstood all of the time. So don't let the Mars and like that seriousness get in the way of you being able to let loose, especially when it comes to your communication because dancing is part of the fool's task. But it doesn't mean that the fool isn't wise. And I think that that's a very important message and something that people forget, especially when you're being called a fool. It doesn't, you know, you can be silly, you can let go, you can just embrace letting go, dance like no one's watching, but it doesn't mean that you aren't wise or that you don't know what you're doing. The fool knows that feeling awkward or uncertain allows you to better prepare for what's next. So embrace that, embrace that energy, be the fool. So up next for what embodied mindfulness practices should you focus on during this seven month long transit? And I keep saying that because I feel like a lot of time when it comes to tarot readings, people feel like they got to, you know, they got all these heavy messages and they have these assignments, so to say, from these messages that they need to do and like they need to complete in like the next week. Like, no, this is a seven month transit until the end of March. So <laughs> you have plenty of time to work on it, especially if you're watching this as soon as it went up. And I also want to say that I am trying something different with this style of video. I'm trying to go really deep and connect psychology more to the meaning of the tarot cards, specifically in this pick a card. This won't always be the style, but it's just something new and fun that I'm trying out. So what embodied mindfulness practices should you focus on? We have the seven of imps, which is the seven of wands, which is fire. So mindfulness is the answer to outbursts. If we examine these emotions, they can be quite powerful moments for learning and empathic listening. That's something else to keep in mind. What embody mindfulness practices should you focus on? Empathic listening. You need to be more patient, which is fitting since we pulled the seven of imps and it's a fire sign and fire signs are notorious for being impatient. Again, I'm an airy sun, I'm allowed to say it. <laughs> Empathic listening is really important for you because if you're able to drop your own defenses to hear what's really happening, Acknowledging sharp words doesn't mean that you accept them, but it, it acknowledges a cause to it. So when we're able to take a pause and kind of acknowledge what happened and kind of recognize what's happening and maybe somebody, you know, maybe it's not us versus them. Maybe somebody is projecting onto us or maybe we're the ones that are projecting onto someone else, especially when it comes to more negative emotions, like when you're dealing with anger, if you're fighting with somebody, if you're able to just pause and not be defensive, lay those, you know, wands of defense down and truly listen to what the person's saying. Like, are they really angry like at you? Does it have anything to do with you? Are they just projecting their anger onto you and acknowledging this? Doesn't mean that you accept it. It doesn't mean that it's okay, but you're able to process and understand this from a different point of view. Instead of like fighting fire with fire, you're able to take this narrative and spin it in a different direction now that you're able to process the information. So when we're the ones who have been wronged, and we're feeling and processing that anger, 
and taking the time to acknowledge it and understand where it's coming from, it actually allows us to obtain better treatment for ourselves in the future. Because even if somebody is spewing their anger and hate onto us, if we're able to acknowledge like this has nothing to do with me, even if that person does not treat you better in the future, which if you're able to avoid them, avoid them and cut them out of your lives because why do you have them there? But if you're in a situation where you're stuck with this person that's angry all the time and they're just projecting to you on all the time, even though they're still continuing with their anger, you're able to have better treatment for yourself because you recognize that that anger is not yours to carry and that it doesn't have anything to do with you. So you are giving yourself better treatment by recognizing that and being able to like put a wall up and not allow that anger to cross over your wall or you can take that anger that's been spewed onto you and toss it somewhere else and you don't have to carry it with you. So that allows you to have the better treatment for yourself in the future. So that's a, a really great mindfulness practice. So like I said, I'm trying to go really deep here. So I hope you're still along on the ride with me. The next question is, what skills should you expand upon during this transit? And I pulled the three of pumpkins, which is the three of pentacles. So this ties in perfectly to our first two cards. We're telling a story here. The fool is telling us to embrace letting go. The second card is telling us to establish boundaries with other people and ourselves. And this is echoing that message of boundaries here. It's like you don't need to do all of this yourself. Our guide is there kind of like watching you um, because in the original in the original art, there are three people that are coming together. So perhaps in this artistry, you are the one placing the last pumpkin into place, um, putting it into place. So each person walks into this space into this masonry or into this church, knowing what their boundaries are. So this, this would work a lot better if there was a third person here. <laughs> um, so, you know, going back to the original artwork, there's three people that work together. They're all able to come together knowing what their boundaries are, knowing what their strengths are, knowing what their weaknesses are. They're able to come together. They're not crossing wires. They're not fighting over who gets to do what. You don't have one person domineering or dominating the situation. You don't have one person trying to build this architecture all them, you know, all by themselves. You have three people who know their boundaries and know what their limitations are. There's not one person trying to do it all alone. So if you're somebody that's always trying to do it all, reflect back to this card. Know what you can and what you cannot bring to the table. Knowing what we should do and what we want to do merge together really, really well. I feel like society also sets us up into thinking that we need to have all these skills and that we're here on our own and that it's really suffocating and really debilitating. But if we're able to just like focus on a couple of skills, know what our strengths are, know what our weaknesses are, we can work together as a community, as a team to get things done without feeling like we're all underwater drowning. So that is a skill to work on and it does have to do with that boundary of knowing what you're capable of and what you're not and when to ask for help. Lastly, we have a message from Mars and I pulled two cards. They both came flying out and they paired together really well. We have the Ten of Ghosts and we have the High Priestess. So here, let's get our little Ten of Ghosts. And this is the Ten of Cups, which traditionally is a family and there's a rainbow and it looks like happily ever after. Um, so the whole idea is that if you work with the energy of the high priestess, 
you'll be able to get that fulfillment of that happily ever after that the original ten of cups tries to sell us but knowing that working with the high priestess is going to help you get that sense of fulfillment and joy so we'll get back to the high priestess in just a minute I really think that, you know, the happily ever after, the fairy tales that we were sold, especially as children of the 90s, um, it's just not realistic because you're going to be chasing that feeling of happiness forever and it's going to leave you feeling empty. So I don't think that the goal of the Ten of Cups is happily ever after, like there's a rainbow and that's it. I think that the Ten of Cups is like enjoying the small moments, like enjoying where you are. Like it was happening during group one's reading. There's a really intense thunderstorm coming through and I live in the desert where we're often in droughts and like it doesn't rain that often. So a ten of, you know, the Ten of Cups for me could be like enjoying and appreciating the rain and going outside, you know, maybe not during a thunderstorm, but you know, when it's raining, going outside and dancing in the rain and having that Drew Barrymore moment, like there's nothing wrong with that. And that's so beautiful. And I think that that is what the 10 of cups is actually all about. Like if you know what I'm talking about, like that TikTok of Drew Barrymore dancing in the rain and appreciating the rain, like that is literally the embodiment of the 10 of cups in my opinion. <laughs> So, um, you know, happy endings are for fairy tales and happiness shouldn't be our only goal of life. And I feel like society, again, is trying to sell us on this message that we have to be happy. We have to obtain X, Y, and Z to have happiness in our life. And they want us to have all of these distractions instead of being able to pause and be in the present moment and to have mindfulness and appreciation and gratitude for where we are and accepting and loving ourselves for where we are in this moment. Um, it's, you know, having this happily ever after and like this fairy tale, it sounds ideal. Life is a range of emotions. It's not just all about happiness. It's about appreciating all of the emotions that we're feeling. I was talking with my friend the other day and it's like talking about accepting the parts of ourselves that we don't like and how we can love them. And she gave me the example of Eeyore. Like Eeyore is kind of like this grump, but people love Eeyore anyways. And it doesn't seem like Eeyore hates himself, you know? And it's just, I have a cat that you know, fits grumpy cat. But even though he's grumpy, I love him anyways. I love and accept all the parts of him anyways. And that's what the Ten of Cups is. It's that fulfillment of just truly loving yourself where you're at and accepting yourself. And I know that that is a lot easier said than done, especially as somebody who is going through some mental health battles themselves. I totally get it. But Life is that range of emotions and being present in each moment or being in, as present as you can will allow you freedom because we really do rely on avoidance. We rely on distractions, you know, we're feeling bad. So we're going to binge watch a TV show to distract ourselves from our feelings. And it's sometimes that's very needed and it is a part of self care, but we're always looking and chasing these distractions and these avoidances of what we're actually feeling inside if it isn't just like this pleasant, happy feeling. So I think that that's, that's what the true meaning of the Ten of Cups is about. That's my rant on it. And the High Priestess, to tie into this, the High Priestess is the subconscious. She's deep in the shadows. She can find the love and the beauty in the dark places. The High Priestess is my favorite tarot card. And the High Priestess asks us to listen in ways we haven't before. So what needs decoding? Look at the previous messages that you've been getting. You'll be able to see the whole truth and have a deeper understanding of what's going on and what you're emoting and it all ties in together so you can get back to this full moment over here so i love that and again we have our kitty friend here and here i just love that our little familiar guiding us along the way so to wrap up <laughs> your reading we have two oracle cards and i pulled from visions in the liminal space 
And I absolutely love this stack because it's more like poems and riddles. So it's something to leave you with, to digest, to really think about. I mean, as if this wasn't enough for you <laughs> to digest. It gives you like these messages to end on to like really think about it and to give you a different perspective and to see how it ties into the reading. Um, I end up giving my opinion and my interpretation of the card sometimes anyways, but sometimes I like you to come up with your own interpretation. So let me know where you are with this reading so far. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. Give me a thumbs up if you're enjoying this. Have the notifications on so you can be notified when my next video comes out. Like I said, I'm trying a different style here with going deeper into the meaning of the cards. There will be more lighter and fun readings to come, I promise. But anyways, let's see what these oracle cards are. Eureka! It is actually the California state motto. I have found it. That is what the guidebook says. I have found it. So just take a moment to really look at the imagery on this card, everything that is going on, and think about how it has tied into it. Because once you hit that Ten of Cups moment, perhaps you're going to be the one saying Eureka. And the other card that we have is Hiding in Plain Sight. So this means that, you know, all this isn't as, you're not going to have to dig as deep as you think to get to this and to to find the stuff that you need to work on. Guidebook says a calling back to awareness. Reality is attention paid to the puzzle pieces we're inclined to see, but the ones we miss are equally, if not more curious. It's been there all along. So let me know what resonated with you, what stood out to you in this reading. If you're interested in following me on social media, I've been posting a lot on other platforms. Check out the Koji link in the description box. Like I said, be sure to subscribe, turn on the notification bell so you can be notified when my next video is out. If you'd like to book a personal reading with me, that is also in the description box. A lot of good information down there. Thank you so much, as always, for your time and energy in this video. I really appreciate it. And I would also really, like seriously, I would love to know what resonated and stood out to you in this reading. And I will see you in the next video. Bye, everyone. Welcome, group three, to your pick a card reading for Mars and Gemini transit and what to expect. You have selected the pile with the clear quartz. And I absolutely love clear quartz because it is a healing crystal. And it's also a really great crystal for spiritual growth. It cleanses, it clarifies, it also amplifies energy. So I just wanted to give a little quick tidbit about the crystal that was on top of your pile. So let's get into your reading. All right, so group three, I am using my Halloween tarot deck, which I am super freaking excited for because it's it's been spooky. Spooky season is all year for me, but I, it was just calling to me. And in the back of the cards, we have this black cat, and this black cat is our little guide throughout the entire journey. So we'll see what our guide is telling us and showing us in these cards. I'm so excited. I'm also doing something a little bit different in this reading. I'm deepening my practice. You can never stop learning, especially when it comes to something like tarot. So in this reading, I'm trying to tie more psychology and like deeper meaning and like really digging deeper into the meaning of the cards for uh, this reading. So it's something new I'm trying out. You'll have to let me know how you like it. If you're subscribed to this channel and you've seen my pick a card readings before, you know I just don't give one to two answers on each card, but I am trying to go a little bit deeper and dig a little bit deeper than I usually do. Now, with that being said, if it is a little too intense for you, know that that is not going to be the planned style for future pick a card readings, so don't let that deter you from my channel. So if you aren't yet already, be sure to subscribe. If you like what you hear, turn on the notification bell so you can know when my next video is out. And if you are pumped for group three, give me a thumbs up. And I'm going to say it now before I forget, let me know what resonates with you in your reading in the comments because I'm always so curious to know what resonates with folks. So if you're comfortable sharing, please share down in the comments. I would love to hear from you. All right, up first. For this transit, 
we have how can you achieve calm, collected, clear communication during Mars in Gemini? So what is the answer? We have the moon card, which was a little bit of a wild card for me, the moon card. This is a card that I'm still studying a lot. Um, but I absolutely love it. So we have this werewolf, which is quite fitting. We have the full moon. We have the castle. We have a little French bulldog. Like, that's so random in here. So um, I love that. Uh, it ties into, you know, the original Pamela Smith artwork of the two dogs howling at the moon. I'm just not seeing... Oh, there's the lobster. I was like, where's our lobster friend? There's a lobster. Uh, but we do have our guide, the black cat, who is on the back of this werewolf, you know, trying to give him some messages. And we have a terrified looking pumpkin. So what does it all mean? Let's get into it. So when it comes to communication, darkness can lead to confusion. Not knowing your way can cause you to forge a new path. So when it comes to the moon, right, because we have all different phases of the moon. So we have a full moon where everything is being brought to light and illuminated, but we also have the new moon where the sky is dark and we're kind of left to figure it out on our own. So different phases of the moon here. The darkness can lead to confusion. Not knowing your way around could cause you to forge a new path. So if you're able to sit in this darkness, without needing it to go away. What new way of thinking could you forge? So this is asking you to like pull back, pause, not say something out of haste because Gemini can be a little sharp tongued and Mars can be a little bit aggressive. Um, so this is asking you to like sit for a minute and what new way of thinking can you forge here during this transit? And I do want to remind you that this is a seven month long transit. You have until the end of March to work on this. So don't think that you need to have all the answers. Sometimes I feel like with tarot, with tarot reading, it can feel like a rush, like everything is going to happen in the next week or like you need to have it all figured out in a week. Like, no, like you have seven months to work on this. And this is a major arcana card, so it does take a little bit longer for it to play out. So not knowing what illuminates your new path is going to allow your defenses to drop and you can see what new paths appear as you move on through the phases of the moon to the full moon. So. I don't know, maybe that was my Pisces Mercury getting a little like woo woo on you, but sitting in the darkness of the full moon is going to give you the time that you need to think about like how can I forge new paths? Like what ways can I, what different ways of thinking can I do when it comes to communication? Especially if you have issues with snapping or like getting angry really easily, sit in the darkness, think about it, like what can you come up with? And when the full moon comes around, you'll see the new paths that you created and it's going to be super cool. So just being able to slow down because hastily making decisions isn't going to help you. So when you slow down, you may find more information later. Don't rush running into that full moon. Don't rush illuminating the new paths that aren't forged, that aren't ready. Because you really, like when it comes to Gemini, Gemini is really about collecting and analyzing information and not speaking too soon. And Mars, with the, you know, with it being in the sign of Mars, it may cause that, you know, you may feel the need to speak out of turn or to speak sooner than you normally would. But nothing is what it seems right now. And this card is really calling you to feel versus think and it's also asking you to release control you're being you know the werewolf is being controlled by the full moon you're being asked to release this control so all of that ties into your communication style releasing the control nothing is what it seems you know wait things out don't feel the need to so quickly respond and if you're watching this soon after this video has come out before October 2nd, 
we are in a mercury retrograde so don't hastily make decisions don't move quickly sit with things for a while it will really help with your communication and being able to stay calm and collected so moving on the second question posed what embodied mindfulness practices should 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 <laughs> The second question, I'm like, oh my God, okay. The second question is, what mindfulness practices should you embody during this transit? And we pulled the devil, my friends, another major arcana card. I'm kind of living for these little creatures on leashes, not gonna lie. Um, so we have our cat, who's distracted by the rat, which ties into the devil, right? Because it's all about distraction. It's all about being stuck in this distraction and memorized by it. So I really love that, how, the, how our guide is even distracted right now. So what mindfulness practices do you need to embody when it comes to the devil? So releasing control. The devil is speaking of releasing control. It's letting go of your inhibitions. Don't stay somewhere you should. For so long, don't stay somewhere you shouldn't be for so long that you become comfortable. Because leaving when you've grown accustomed to something like a codependency is certainly scary, but resistance prolongs the cycle of pain. So this is all about staying somewhere we know we shouldn't be. Maybe it's sitting with some uncomfortableness. Maybe it's sitting with, you know, the devil deals with like addictions. It also can deal with mental health. So maybe you're sitting with some negative feelings right now. But your ego, I always talk about ego, especially when it comes to the devil. Your ego wants to protect you. So your, you know, your ego is trying to protect you by chaining you up and saying, no, we've grown accustomed to this feeling. We feel comfortable here because we've been here for such a long time. This is our home now. And why do we want to leave? This is a sense of comfort. Even though it's not good, it's a sense of comfort. Why do we want to not be here? So it's scary to leave, but resisting the urge to leave is just going to keep that cycle of pain going and you're just going to be stuck here and you are your own prisoner. You can take the chain off at any time. You are free to go whenever. So you're really battling your ego and your mind when you're in this place. So when it comes to mindfulness, acknowledging what has a hold over you and the impact that it has on your daily life. Shine the light, you know, maybe shine the light of the moon. <laughs> Tying it into our other card. Shine the light of the moon on these negative practices and just acknowledge your feelings. Take your time with this. Be gentle with yourself. Again, this is a major arcana card. It's going to take time to play out and this transit is seven months long. So the mindfulness here is just acknowledging what has a hold of you just acknowledging it is simply enough and recognizing the negative impact that it may have in your life and just knowing your feelings is good enough for right now also acknowledging those things is going to lead you to your path of freedom and release from this hold so card three is skills to expand upon and we have the four of ghosts which is the four of cups and this is like a mystery in tarot because there's so many different ways to interpret the four of cups because it could, you know, some people say it represents apathy. Some people rep say it represents meditation. Some people say it represents not being happy with what you have, but closing yourself off to like other opportunities or not wanting other opportunities. You know, there's so many different ways it could go. But to me, what really spoke to me when it comes to skills to expand upon and it ties into the devil because acknowledging is listening and a skill that you need to expand upon my friends is listening. That's also going to tie into the moon, right? Sitting with yourself in the darkness and listening. 
So you really have a lesson of listening here <laughs> for this Mars and Gemini transit. Um, listening. What's interesting with this card is that, is it all bad, right? Because like the moon is smiling, this like decoration in the tree is smiling. It looks like the ghosts are having a party. It looks like they're having a really good time. Your guide is kind of like, what are you doing? Like what's going on? Like our little black cat friend. And you're just kind of sitting there like staring off into space. You're not present in the moment. So you have these ghosts that are wanting to invite you to the party. They're wanting to communicate with it, with with you. But you're it's it's as if you can't even see them. So can you even see these ghosts? Can you hear them? I mean that like literally and figuratively since you know they're literal ghosts like can you actually see and hear what's going on around you? All right. So anyways, <laughs> The more distractions and comfort we have, the less attunement we have to what's around us. Because again, like these ghosts are literally talking to you, touching you, trying to pull you in, but are you even aware of their presence? We project our wants to the world around us, but what are we being told? It can be scary and not easy to let go of your agenda and to listen to these happy little ghosts that just want to talk to you. So what I'm getting at here is that, you know, saying that we sit in our comfort and that we distract ourselves, we're turning ourselves off from ourselves, from our guides, from the world around us. Like a theme in all three of these readings has been mindfulness and being present and being away from the distractions and the numbness that we are all bogged down in and that we have been bogged down in the last couple of years. There's nothing wrong with that. How can you not be bogged down and numbed out after everything that we have been through? Um, but we have grown so accustomed to these distractions that it's like we're just kind of wandering around lost almost, even though that there are these souls, these ghosts, our intuition, our guides that are there trying to help us. We've done a really good job of shutting them out and closing them off. And maybe it's just even our inner voice that we've done a good job of shutting off and turning off. So it can be really scary and not easy to let go of our agenda and to listen to what these ghosts have to say to us. So the question is, what skill to expand upon is listening. Taking a pause on the outside noise and listening to what's inward. And my question to you is how can you uncross your arms and hold out your hands with trust and accept it? I told you we were getting deep. We are getting deep in this one. Anyways, last question, a message from Mars. Mars has given us the eight of wands, the eight of wit, the <laughs> eight of imps. I'm going on like an hour of filming here, so my words are getting all crisscross. But a message from Mars, quite fitting that we get a fire card from our friend Mars, who is a fire planet. Some may argue it's a water planet because it also rules Scorpio, but traditionally it rules Aries. Your message from Mars is to stop trying to control and let go of what should I do? What shouldn't I do? Should I be doing this? Should I be doing that? I don't know. Like, is this the right path I should be doing? Like, I'm like, I don't know. Or like just being so overly confident, like you need to let go, man. Like you're too, you're wound up too tight because I mean, in the original artwork, it's eight wands floating through the air. You don't know who's shooting them, where they're landing, what's going on. Um, so, you know, you really need to learn to let go if you want the accuracy of these arrows to land. And as you can see, these imps have arrows in their hands. So it's, it's still very fitting. So you can train yourself to shoot these arrows all you want, but when you let go and actually fire them, that's up to something else where they land. It's not up to you. You can practice. You can prep, you can study, you can master a subject, you can control all you want, but you have no say in how any of this works out. It's not up to you. 
So learning to let go before you even draw your arm back to fire this arrow allows you a sense of peace in accepting the outcome of where the arrow lands. Allow what's there to be there. Allow first, then when you exert will, you're grounded in what is already. So letting go of this control, listen to what's around you, stop holding yourself captive, embrace the darkness and forge new paths, and you'll be able to fire off and have the confidence and just have the acceptance of like, I may have studied for this my entire life, and now I'm putting it up into the universe, and I accept what the universe is giving me in return because I have no control over what's going to happen. So this is a really big, long lesson for you to learn. So luckily for you, you have until the end of March to work these things out. Like I said, this is a lot. It's a lot heavier. It's a lot deeper. I'm really causing you to like think and go deep here. It's for your own good. I promise. So as always, I close out the reading with cards. These are Oracle cards. And like I said before, before we end, be sure to subscribe, turn on the bell notification so you can be notified. If you would like a personal one-on-one -on -one reading with me, my website's in my bio, so is the link to my social media. But this is the Visions in the Liminal Space Oracle deck. And I love this because this is like a Oracle deck of like poems and puzzles and like it causes you to think. So as if this isn't enough to digest, I leave you <laughs> with some more messages to think about. Um, but you know, I give my interpretation on some of the cards. Sometimes I'm just, I just leave you with the message of the guidebook, but I will be reading from the guidebook with these cards. So the first card that we have is love and light and hate and shadows, because as we learned in the moon card, there is lightness and there is darkness and you cannot love and light your way out of anything. <laughs> So what the guidebook says about this card is the line of dualism can only be towed for so long before coming to suspect the conceptions of good and evil are nothing more than the same room peered through an alternate vantage points at different times of the day. Any truth to be found in a dualistic universe will contain within it some amount of paradox among them being that there's a thing's existence is interdependent on the existence of the opposite. So basically you can't have love and light without hate and shadows. There's duality in the world. You have to accept it. And that also ties into the lesson of all the other cards is acceptance is a really big lesson in all three piles actually. <laughs> so here we have let it break. You got to break those patterns, baby. You got to let go. The guidebook even says to let life fall apart because you got to. You got to go into that moon phase, my loves. Let it fall apart. Let it come back together and let it fall apart again. Instead of trying to control the movement, learn to pivot alongside it. Oftentimes, things need to break to become something else. On a literal level, muscles tear during exercise to grow back stronger. Minerals with fractures let in the light and make possible the presence of rainbows. Explore the prospect of breaking without being broken. Explore that breaking may simply be a means of opening. Whether you must do the deed or simply allow it, breaking something or permitting it to break, in this case, is an act of mercy. The cards don't lie. I, you know, I pull this and then I pull these and it ties in beautifully to the moon card, to the eight of wands, to being able to listen to freeing yourself. You got to let it break and you have to accept the shadow that comes with the light. Get comfortable and cozy in the shadow so you can thrive in the light. So that wraps it up, group three. Again, please let me know in the comments what resonated with you, what stood out to you. I get really curious. I love receiving feedback. So as always, I really appreciate your time and energy in this video, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye, everyone. Best of luck.